So that moves us to the third stage of the mining life cycle, which is the development or exploitation stage. This is where the actual mining of the mineral take place. That's why we call it exploitation stage. In some literature, when you see development, it's rather referring to the construction of the mine, but it's used interchangeably. Others also name it development and production of the mine. So development or exploitation of the mineral resource can be done in two, uh, through two methods. One is the surface mining method, and two is the underground method. The surface mining method is usually done by um, in our artisanal, artisanal and small scale mining sector because that, that do not require much capital and um, much in capital in terms of technology machineries and capital also in terms of um, finances is relatively cost effective. So either through uh, surface mining where they just remove the surface of the ground and access the mineral deposits or through underground mining, which involves deep pits, um, digging of wells, um, digging of um, tunnels under the, uh, beneath the ground and all that, which is requires so much in terms of finances and in terms of technical expertise. So whichever method is used, the mineral ore is extracted and the mineral ore is usually the natural rock which contains the mineral um, deposits. So once it's removed, it has to undergo certain processes before the mineral itself, the relevant mineral, is extracted from the rock. So once the mineral is extracted, is crushed or grounded to enable the extraction of the relevant mineral. And these undergo several processes to be able to extract it. Some companies have their own processing plants Others do not. So those who do not, you just have to send um, the natural rock to a processing plant outside the mine to be able to do the processing and extract the relevant mineral. So there are three phases or three processes or methods. Let me say there are three main methods that the mineral extraction can be made from the natural rock. One, we can choose to use the heap leaching that's where chemical additions such as cyanide are added to the rock and heated under high temperatures to be able to extract the relevant mineral. We also have the flotation method where certain compounds are added to the rock and the compounds attach themselves to the ore and we are able to separate it. And we have the smelting facilities where the rock is roasted under high temperatures and by that they are segregated. So either way, it's a form of extracting the relevant mineral from the, from the rock. So once they are extracted, they undergo a number of processes to refine in order to increase its purity and also in some jurisdictions, put them into bars and other final, uh, final products for consumption. And this stage also can take a very long time, depending on the size of the mine. Considering the fact that this is the main mining operations, there are several legal requirements that the company has to oblige with to ensure that it does not come into trouble with authorities and also maintain its social license to operate, always taking cognizance of the environmental impact and also the well-being of the community to ensure that if the mining operations are done in a sustainable manner and at an effective way. 
So you may require your mining permits and compliance to several obligations, including the safety and health um, compliance, environmental compliance, compliance with um, maintaining water bodies, compliance with the level of vibration, noise pollution, air pollution, all these must be considered during this stage of the mine life cycle because um, usually the mines are operated not too far from the community settlement. So you may want to control the level of pollution as much as possible. And here, just as always, require the collective responsibility of all stakeholders that is to ensure that investors adhere strictly to licensing obligations. You have to make sure that you operate within, strictly within the remits of the license that the state agency has issued to you. You have to ensure that you operate within the safe, the safety standards. We operate within the environmental standards. We operate within the noise, the allowable noise pollution standards set by the environmental authority. Here again, the investor is supposed to ensure constant reporting based on the legal requirements of the country within which you are operating and the contracting terms. It is also important the government agencies and other non-state actors like civil society organizations, community activists, and even community members themselves undertake strict monitoring of the operations of the mines to ensure that they are operating within the allowable standards. So during my presentation earlier, I spoke about the level of um, local content that the phase, this phase of the mine life cycle can expose um, the communities and even the nationals to. But as I mentioned, so when you start from the initial, you realize that the exploration did not match in terms of employment. But when it gets to the mine stage, the employment goes up because those are the main, that's the stage that and that is the main activity, which is extraction of the, of the minerals. So you have employment going up. But like I mentioned earlier, usually in our African context, the level of technical expertise and competence are relatively low compared to the industry requirements. So even where there are local content requirements to ensure the employment of um, indigenous, you realize that those positions that do not have much value are the ones that you have indigenous occupying. Um, and you have the more technical um, positions, um, which are more rewarding and more pay being held by expatriates. So for instance, if you go to a typical extractive company you may have about 60 or 70%, even 80% of employees being locals. But then when you look at the value in terms of um, wages, in terms of income, you realize that the minority, which are the experts, even have more um, income, receive more income in terms of value compared to how much is paid to nationals. So you have the 20% um, of expatriates, maybe taking 80% of the income uh, or occupying about 80% of the income structure or the pay structure of the company. And you have the 80% nationals receiving just about 20% or occupying just about 20% of the pay structure of the company. And this has got to do with the existence of the requisite skills, the technical skills, the core skills that is needed to keep the mine run, running, that is needed to ensure that the objective of the company is met. And usually, even the nationals, you barely find those from the communities participating because of the 
high skilled level that the mine operations require, you rather find the communities participating at the very low level, which requires um, unskilled labor. So from the development stage, as I mentioned earlier, if, let me go back. Like I mentioned in other literature, from development, you may move to processing. But if you followed my delivery, I had put together both the development and the processing where I talked about the various methods of extraction and also that's the processing stage. So from development in other literature, you may go to processing, but that has already been tackled under development. So from there, you come to the very last stage of the mine life cycle, which is mine closure and restoration. Now, there are several reasons um, why we will get to this stage. At the beginning of uh, my delivery, at the exploration stage, I mentioned that the mine life cycle can end at that stage, that's the exploration stage, even though it is the first level, because it is at that stage that the commerciality or the profitability of the mine is established. So if based on geological information that was gathered at the exploration stage, the company was not able to establish the commerciality of the mine, then it will just end it there. They will not have to go through the planning and construction and the development stage because it's not worth the investment. There's no justifiability to that investment, so it ends there. But then if they are able to establish the commerciality at the exploration stage and during the planning stage, the economic viability is positive, then they will go through actual extraction of the mineral. So that's one. And two, another reason why you will get to this stage of mine closure is the depletion of the ore. In my introduction, I mentioned that natural resources are exhaustible, that they are depletable. Once we extract it, you forgo future opportunity to extract. So at a point of mineral extraction, the minerals will finish. And at that point, you need to bring your mining operations to an end, which is termed the mine closure. Another reason why you get to this stage is perhaps there are still considerable quantities of mineral reserves in the area, but then the development of the mine has lost its economic viability, that it is no longer economical to continue to operate. And this is due to a number of factors. One, I mentioned that revenues from natural resources are volatile that they are exposed to external market shocks. So where we have commodity crash at the global market, that affects the economic viability of operating the mine. And during this level, a lot of mine try to continue by um, producing at low levels. But then when it gets to a point where it's no longer economical, they can cease to operate. Sometimes it can be permanent, other times it can be temporary waiting for the boom season to resume um, operations. So, like I mentioned, the operation can resume once there are um, the outlook at the global market changes and prices begin to pick up. Maybe we go back to a boom cycle where prices are soaring, then companies can resume um, operations, mine operations. 
Again, perhaps there can be the advent of newer technologies, which improves the level of productivity of operations, thereby minimizing the cost of operations. And when, when that happens, it means automatically it increases the productivity from the mine and the economic viability of the mine. So the mine may resume operations based on the agreement or the conditionalities that were agreed on between the state and the mine. There are times the operator who was operating can go and another mining company can take up from where the activity stopped based on the market trends. So when you start mining operation, the graph that I showed earlier, you realize that um, at the initial stage, the production is low because you are now starting your mining operation. But as you continue, production increases and reaches its peak at its maturity. But after decades of production and reserves begin to decline, like I mentioned, it's exhaustible. So when it starts depleting, you realize that the rate of production will begin to decrease. And this will lead to planning the closure of the mine. For this one, once there's reserve depletion, the mine closure is permanent and not temporary in the case of um, establishing the economic viability I explained earlier. So mine closure is important for various reasons and should be incorporated. And as I mentioned during the planning stage, you have a reclamation plan, that's a closure and reclamation plan to ensure that at the end of the mine cycle, the mine is closed in an effective manner, considering the environment and the well-being of the community to ensure that there are no adverse effects after the, the closure of the mine. And this involves a number of things. We have the financial arrangement and all that. It requires significant level of investment to ensure effective closure of the mine. This also includes decommissioning of the land because you have to ensure that all the facilities that were established at the mine site are sustainably removed so that there will not be any adverse effect or um, pollution after the departure of the company. We have the commission of the mine stabilization of the landfill. That's, um, as I mentioned earlier, some metals are not just surface mining, but underground mining, which requires excavating into higher, deeper depths the surface of the ground. And in that case, it means those areas have to be filled up to ensure that um, the safety of communities, the safety of the ecosystem is preserved. So there are some considerations during the mine that can be considered or that are considered in the mine rehabilitation plan. We have the public health and safety. We have the removal of waste and hazardous material, and we have the land forms and vegetation. All these, this is not done during the closure stage. During the second stage, the planning and construction that I spoke about earlier, that's where you develop your reclamation, your closure and reclamation plan. So at this stage of the mine cycle, which is the final stage, is only to implement the reclamation or uh, decommissioning plan that you provided or you developed during the planning stage of the mine cycle. And usually these are some um, agreements and conditionalities are agreed between um, stakeholders, uh, mainly the the requisite um, state agencies and the mining company, and sometimes the some key stakeholders in the communities. 
much focus go into the full implementation of the land reclamation plan. So you have the companies that made a reclamation plan, all right, but when they get to the mine closure, because the companies fail to comply or maybe the relevant state agency to put and for once that is done, it means the land becomes unusable. It will no longer be useful for um, other relevant um, use because if the reclamation plan is implemented to its fullest, that's where perhaps there will be um, planting of vegetation. That's where perhaps there will be other things that can be done to reclaim the land, even if it's not for a great purposes, at least it can be put to a useful um, activity, which will not be hazardous to the environment or to the people who may patronize the area after the mine life cycle. So this requires investor accountability and assurance of closing processes. Because this is the final stage, and perhaps if the company is a multinational foreign company, it will be long gone. It will not be around to even witness the dire impacts of its activities on humans and the ecosystem. It is important, and the honor here lies on the government and the communities to ensure that mining companies or extractive companies strictly adhere to reclamation plans or closure plans to ensure that the commissioning of facilities are done as appropriate to ensure that planting of vegetation to reclaim the land, removal of certain hazardous waste, certain hazardous chemicals are removed to prevent seepages to water bodies, to prevent seepages to plants, which may pose dangers to um, both humans and animals in the area. So we have the post-closure, which is also part of the closure um, stage. So we have um, ongoing maintenance and monitoring of impacts. Thus, there's the need to ensure that once the mines have completely ended, the water bodies are still um, portable. Can people access the water for drinking? Can people access it for other uses, but and without having any um, health impact on them? How about the use by animals and other um, living things in the ecosystem? This is to ensure the preservation or restoration of the biodiversity. So we have legal and the closure certificate. And before the closure certificate, it is assumed that the relevant state agency, the environmental agency, or um, the district, as which, whichever relevant state agency is involved, has ensured that the reclamation plan that was submitted prior to the actual extraction of the minerals have been implemented to the latter, and even other considerations have been made to ensure complete restoration of the area. And we have the financial provision for post disclosure. So that brings us to the end of model one of this course, which was looking at the stages of the mine life cycle. Thank you very much. And if you have your questions, can go ahead, put them in the comments and other avenues. Thank you for your audience.